Okay, so the previous videos uh, focused on an introduction to finite difference methods uh, as well as boundary conditions. So the obvious next step is to go ahead and solve a simple problem uh, uh, or an example. So solving a problem uh, or an example. Uh, and this is going to be probably one of the most simple problems you can encounter uh, because it's going to be one dimensional uh, and we're going to be uh, given the initial heat distribution. So T0 is going to be known to us. So T0 is given. And all we want to do is just find out how this system behaves uh, in time. So we want to evolve it forward in time and see what the heat distribution is uh, at subsequent time points after T0. So let's say for an example, we had a five point lattice. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, and it's numbered from one to five uh, along the X axis. And for this lattice, uh, we want to find out how the, the temperature distribution changes in time after T zero. So we want to find it at T one, T two, so on. So we're going to write down that equation from the, from the first lecture. So uh, t of x t plus 1 minus t of x t uh, over delta t and that has to equal uh, some constant k times t uh, of x plus 1 t plus t of x minus 1 t minus 2 t of x t uh, and that's going to be divided by delta x square uh, and there's some forms of the equation where you can have k on the other side, but it really makes no difference, uh, obviously, because it's just a constant. So it's it's the same thing if you put it on uh, the left side or the right side. Anyways, uh, we want to uh, recursively solve for the, the heat distribution. So what we, what we want to do is, uh, given t0, we want to find uh, t of x comma t plus 1 for all of these x values. And then do that same thing for x plus uh, for t plus two for t plus three and so on until uh, whatever our desired uh, final time is. So that's going to be a recursive computation. Uh, and if I write down the uh, if I sorry if I isolate for this term, so I'm going to have t uh, of x t plus one has to equal. So I'll multiply the delta t on that side. So delta t uh, times k times this entire term. And then we add uh, the previous temperature, so t x comma t. And so we basically solve this equation for all of the x values in the, in the lattice, and we keep on doing that for all subsequent times after t0, uh, all the way until whatever final time uh, we want to go up until. So obviously, uh, for a 5-point lattice, it's not that difficult, but for a 10-point or a 15-point lattice, or, or even a larger lattice, uh, we don't want to be doing all of this by hand. We want some computer assistance. Uh, to do it for us. So I've written a MATLAB script just for an example uh, so we can play around with that. So it's a 10 point uh, lattice and I've set everything to 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, sorry, let me just change that. 10 degrees Celsius uh, to start off with. Uh, K is the constant which is one third. So if K is larger then the system evolves faster and if it's uh, smaller it evolves slower. <laughs> and then uh, x temp is exterior temperature, which I've set to 5 uh, Celsius, and then the final time we want to go up until is 1000 seconds uh, with a step point of 0 0.1. Uh, and here's the for loop that's actually going to do uh, the computations. So uh, let me change the time to actually 100 seconds, so it's going to be a bit quicker. Uh, and I'll change this to just 1. And so let's just run this system uh, as an example. And so you can see the graph here. Uh, the topmost line is the is the first uh, step point, so it's at time t equals one, and then it goes all the way down uh, until time t equals hundred. And you can see it's approaching thermal equilibrium, uh, and obviously the edges uh, drop down to five degrees Celsius faster than the core because they're closer to the external environment. So if we tweak some parameters around, uh, let's say that we change this uh, time to a thousand and then we run this.
you can see that it basically comes all the way to thermal equilibrium. And if you see these data points over here, you can see that they're basically all five within rounding error. So uh, it's, it's more or less reaching thermal equilibrium uh, at a thousand seconds. And that's something that we would expect for such a small uh, lattice or such a small rod. Uh, so if we, if we change some more things around, so let's say if we change that back to 100 and we change t-step to 0 0.1 instead of 1. Now what this is going to do is it's going to move the time points closer together and that means that we're going to get a more accurate representation of the actual continuous equation uh, where the time points are infinitesimally close. But that's going to be at the expense of computational resources because the computer will have to do more calculations if you use 0.1 instead of 1. So it's always going to be a trade-off uh, between computational resources and accuracy. So you can see it's, the lines are much denser, uh, much closer together, and we have much more data points. Uh, and once again, it, it still reaches basically uh, five degrees Celsius or, or relatively close to five degrees Celsius uh, at a hundred seconds. So if we change something else, if we change this back to a thousand, and let's say we put a 200 over here. So it's gonna be a very hot center and then everything else will be 10 degrees Celsius. And now if you run this, it's gonna take it's going to take a while because there's so many data points I have to do, 10, uh, 1,000 seconds and step of 0.1. So it's still coming closer and closer to 5, you can see. And let's just wait until that, that uh, stops. And you can see that basically everything's reached five now or within rounding error, it's all at five. So it's, a, it's basically a thermal equilibrium. So let's just wait for the, for the graph to pop up. And you can see that there's that spike at, at this lattice point five uh, for, because we, we set that to 200 Celsius initially, but it's still, it's dropping off and the heat from the center uh, from the core of the rod is spreading to the edges and eventually it's escaping to the outside environment, which is uh, colder. And you can see that it slowly comes down uh, and then it, it still reaches more or less thermal equilibrium uh, when you go all the way to a thousand seconds. And that's, again, something that we would expect because if you give it enough time, it should still reach thermal equilibrium. So that's basically it for this video. Thank you all for watching.